the biggest bank collapse since the 2008 financial crisis. And it shut down today. It's called Silicon Valley Federal Bank. Officials have been working around the clock to try to find some resolution in the wake of the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. We begin and our report with the abrupt closures of three banks in a matter of days. Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank. On March the 10th, 2023, the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation (DFPI) and the FDIC announced that they are shutting down Silicon Valley Bank and FDIC will be in charge when the bank reopens on Monday. This is the second largest bank failure in U.S. history and the largest bank failure since the 2008 financial crisis when Washington Mutual went bust. The federal government took over the bank after a shocking filing revealed that SVB had sold $21 billion in assets and was unloading stock to raise additional capital to shore up its liquidity. When it failed to raise $2.25 billion after losing $1.8 billion in losses from the sale of long-dated U.S. government bonds, shares of its parent company, SVB Financial Group, fell by over 60%. This has been deeply disappointing and concerning as it sent anxiety across the banking system, shook the tech industry, and raised concerns about how to get the money bank and pay the employees. From winemakers in California to startups across the Atlantic Ocean, companies are pulling their hair trying to figure out how to manage their finances after their bank suddenly shut down on Friday. The stress is real and it is not only for businesses but also for all their workers whose paychecks may get tied up in the chaos. Investors are now on edge about whether its demise could spark a broader banking meltdown. Hello everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we will be talking about the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. We are going to explain why SVB collapsed, what you need to know, as well as what we might expect next. Silicon Valley Bank collapsed with astounding speed on Friday. But first, let's take a closer look at the Silicon Valley Bank. Based in Santa Clara, SVB was a major investor in health tech, digital health and biotech companies and for startups and investors. According to data on its own website, SVB says it banks nearly half of all U.S. venture-backed startups and 44% of the U.S. venture-backed technology and healthcare companies that went public in 2022 are SVB clients. Nearly half of all U.S. venture-backed technology and life science companies bank with SVB, the 16th largest bank in the country with a total of $342 billion in client funds and $74 billion in total loans. Silicon Valley Bank was also a bank to more than 2,500 venture capital firms, including Lightspeed, Bain Capital and Insight Partners, the New York Times reported. SVB is a major investor in the technology space and has backed rounds for a slew of health tech and digital health companies including Carrot, Nomad, Olive, Komodo, Dispatch Health, Patient and Digital Ascent, as Fierce Healthcare previously reported. SVB had about $209 billion in total assets and about $174 billion in total deposits as of December 31, 2022. According to its Federal Financial Institutions Examination Council call report, it had $151 billion of non-insured deposits as of December 31, 2022. How did the SVB collapse happen? As the preferred bank for the tech sector, SVB services were in hot demand throughout the pandemic years. The initial market shock of COVID-19 in early 2020 quickly gave way to a golden period for startups and established tech companies, as consumers spent big on gadgets and digital services. Many tech companies used SVB to hold the cash they used for payroll and other business expenses, leading to an influx of deposits. The bank invested a large portion of the deposits, as banks do. Like many other banks, SVB dumped billions into long-dated U.S. government bonds, including those backed by mortgages during the era of near-zero interest rates. What seemed like a safe bet quickly came unstuck, as the Federal Reserve hiked interest rates aggressively to battle against inflation. When interest rates rise, bond prices fall. So when the Federal Reserve started to hike rates rapidly to combat inflation, SVB's bond portfolio started to lose significant value. 
If SVB were able to hold those bonds for a number of years until they mature, then it would receive its capital back. However, as the economy soured over the last year, with tech companies particularly affected, many of the bank's customers started drawing on their deposits. Since SVB didn't have enough cash on hand, it started selling some of its bonds at huge losses. As SVB tried to raise new venture capital to offset fleeing deposits, the bank lost $1.8 billion on the sale of $21 billion of bonds whose values were torpedoed by the Fed rate hikes. The bank run was triggered on Wednesday, March 8, when the lender announced a $1.75 billion capital raising to plug the hole caused by the loss of the sale of its bond portfolio. It was meant to reassure investors but it had the opposite effect, alarmed customers that the bank was short of capital. It immediately started the panic among customers, who withdrew their money in large numbers. The bank stock plummeted 60% Thursday and dragged other bank shares down with it as investors began to fear a repeat of the global financial crisis a decade and a half ago. By Friday morning, trading in SVB shares was halted and it had abandoned efforts to raise capital or find a buyer. California regulators intervened, shutting the bank down and placing it in receivership under the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which typically means liquidating the bank's assets to pay back depositors and creditors. It took just roughly 48 hours or two days, between their announcement and its collapse. Here are some of the companies that were affected by the Silicon Valley Bank crash. Axum Therapeutics The pharmaceutical company said that it had quite a good amount of cash deposits at Silicon Valley Bank and at another bank. The company is both publicly and privately owned. BlockFi The New Jersey-based cryptocurrency bank and lender left $227 million at Silicon Valley Bank. Its funds are not insured because they are in a money market mutual fund, which invests in CAS and low-risk short-term debt securities after their bankruptcy. BlockFi filed for bankruptcy in November last year, after the arrest of Sam Bankman-Fried, the former FTX CEO. The firm also has an international subsidiary in Bermuda that filed for bankruptcy there. Camp Camp is a privately owned toy store based in New York. They had most of their company's cash assets at SVB. The company posted this on its social media accounts. For real, our bank got shut down by regulators, so we're asking that you run, don't walk to our bank run sale. 40% off the entire site, except tickets and gift cards, with the promo code bankrun on camp.com. Or, don't use the promo code and help even more. Thank you. Circle the payments technology firm and big player in the cryptocurrency industry tweeted Friday that about $3.3 billion of the roughly $40 billion of its USD coin USDC, cryptocurrency reserves remained at Silicon Valley Bank. And this caused USD coins value. Compass Coffee The DC-based coffee company's payroll was severely impacted by the SVB collapse. Its payroll was not processed by the bank as it's supposed to be. Etsy The well-known online marketplace focusing on craft supplies and handmade, bespoke and vintage items, said that some deposit payments to some sellers had been delayed due to the unexpected SVB collapse and it remains unknown how many have been affected by this delay. Etsy has more than 95 million buyers and 7.5 million sellers all around the world. Pinterest. The social media photos and videos sharing platform has also been impacted but it has not responded at this moment. Roblox. The online gaming platform is based in California and it said that about 5% of its $3 billion of cash as of February 28 was kept at Silicon Valley Bank. Roku. Roku is known for its low-priced streaming devices and services. It is based in San Jose and it went public in September 2017. Roku said that it had about $487 million of its $1.9 billion at Silicon Valley Bank, about 26% of the firm's cash as of Friday. The company's deposits with SVB are largely uninsured. Shopify 
The e-commerce giant has temporarily paused payments to its merchants who receive payments to SVB accounts. These online sellers must update their bank accounts that have no connections with SVB to resume getting payments. Shopify Capital, an arm of Shopify that provides loans and cash advances to its merchants, has been impacted by SVB's closure, according to the company's website. Merchants are not able to view their loan offers or see their loan repayments as of now. What is the FDIC? The reason many SVB customers will have access to at least $250,000 of their deposits immediately is the financial institution backed by the FDIC. Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, known as FDIC, is an independent branch of the government that was created during the Great Depression to restore the public's confidence in banks. During the Great Depression, many banks failed partly because they had lent out too much of the money customers deposited with them. At a basic level, banks make money by charging interest to lend money to people. But the money they lend often comes from customers' deposits. That isn't problematic unless the bank finds itself in a situation when every customer wants to withdraw their deposits at once in what's known as a bank run. The bank would have to tell many customers it doesn't have their money because it was lent out. When banks are members of the FDIC, they have to adhere to the agency's regulations designed to make sure they aren't engaging in dangerous practices that could jeopardize their customers' deposits. In exchange, the FDIC offers their customers insurance for up to $250,000 in deposits if the bank fails. What's next? What about the depositors and investors? When a bank is closed by the FDIC, the regulator sells its investments, such as stocks and bonds and other assets to provide money to a bank's customers. But customers are likely to receive only a percentage of their funds back and the process could take several months or longer, resulting in hardships for customers who need to pay bills and employee salaries. The good news is that U.S. consumers with less than $250,000 assets in the bank can rely on insurance provided by FDIC. Any amount over that level is deemed an unsecured deposit. Funds in a money market mutual fund are not covered by the FDIC's insurance either. However, customers with deposits that were not insured will receive a payment that is called a dividend by the FDIC. They will receive a receivership certificate for the remaining amount of their uninsured funds. This could take months or even longer. The FDIC said in a statement that all insured depositors will have full access to their insured deposits no later than Monday morning, March 13, 2023. The FDIC will pay uninsured depositors an advance dividend within the next week. Uninsured depositors will receive a receivership certificate for the remaining amount of their uninsured funds. The bank regulator is working on getting price quotes and doing deals right now, he said. Those proceeds will get a haircut of some kind to reflect ongoing liabilities and operating costs for the receivership and then get distributed. After that, future payments will be dependent on ongoing asset sales. And, for the future standpoint, there are potential risks related to this. Short sellers are out there and they are probably planning to attack every single bank, starting with the small ones. There are already some signs of stress at other banks. Trading in First Republic Bank and PacWest Bancorp was temporarily halted this past Monday after the shares plunged 65% and 52% respectively. Charles Schwab stock was down 7% at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time Monday. West Coast regional lenders with large commercial real estate loan portfolios are feeling the pain after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank on Friday and the closure of Signature Bank over the weekend. Based on recent news, Signature Bank was shut down by regulators on Sunday, after SVB collapse. This is the second massive bank failure in just three days. The New York-based crypto-friendly bank faced a crisis after SVB was seized by regulators on Friday. Startups who banked with SVB are waiting to find out when deposits and financing will be returned and it raises questions about their ability to make payroll in the coming week. For the short term, SVB will be unable to fund its commitments to extend future credit or to perform its counterparty obligations under swaps and other hedging instruments.
In the event SVB is acquired by another bank, the successor bank may assume such obligations, but no assurance can be provided at this stage. On March 12th, U.S. businessman and billionaire Elon Musk tweeted assuming the possibility of buying the bankrupt Silicon Valley Bank. He said, I'm open to the idea. Let's just hope that the government is going to do something to avoid the start of a banking crisis. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel and we will keep you updated. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to smash the like button. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos explaining the stock market, real estate market as well as the finance and economy updates. And also feel free to add us on social media. In the meantime, we will see you soon and you have a wonderful rest of your days.